Following on from our last video, looking at wind strength and its effect on our strategical decision making, we're going to continue to look at strategy and outside the boat factors, but more specifically, we're going to focus on how do the wind shifts affect our upwind strategy. Before we dive right in, I just want to recap what we mean by the word strategy. Our strategy can be described as the fastest route around a course without thinking about the impact of other boats. This is compared with tactics, which is decisions made around the course due to other boats. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to forget about tactics and purely focus on our strategy. So as I mentioned, this video is going to be focusing on shifts. Let's just run through the basics and get some terminology nailed. The wind direction isn't always constant and it changes direction due to a number of factors which we'll explore later on. But this change in angle has a massive impact on the angle that we can sail compared to stationary marks. In this example, we can see that the wind is shifting to the right. The yellow boat, who is on starboard tack, can now point much closer to the windward mark, meaning less distance sailed and a faster route. We call this a lift. Now compare this to the blue boat's angle on the same wind shift. Being on port means that he's now sailing a far worse angle compared to the windward mark. This is called a header. Hopefully we can now see that we want to try and stay on lifts when the wind shifts and tack if we're being headed. So now that we're all on the same page, let's look at a few different types and causes of wind shifts and how they may affect our upwind strategy. When the wind's direction changes from one side of an average bearing to the other at regular intervals, we call this an oscillating shift pattern. This could be due to a land effect or down to the unstable nature of the weather system on that day. In this situation, staying in time with the shifts and tacking to stay on the lifted tack it is the fastest route to the windward mark due to having to sail a significantly less distance. This can be tricky to achieve and requires good use of telltales and or your compass as they can really help you work out if you're being lifted or headed. The second shift pattern that we're going to have a look at is called a persistent shift. These often slower shifts swing the wind direction across to one side only. This tracking in the wind angle is often due to a meteorological effect such as a sea breeze or a frontal weather system and therefore are normally well forecasted. In this situation we trust that the shift is going to increase during the beat and therefore bite into the smaller header initially to be rewarded with a larger lift later on, shown here by the blue boat. Some sailors understand this better when related to staying on the inside of an athletics track to run less distance. However, this approach only works if we are certain that the shift is a persistent one. If there's uncertainty in this, then this is a high risk option as the wind may shift back to center and we won't get that later lift. Finally, a prominent feature on the shoreline, such as a valley or a headland, can bring a localized change in the wind direction. As seen here, the wind flows past a headland and hugs the shoreline slightly, bending around before slowly changing back to its normal direction. If the course is positioned close enough to be affected by this wind bend, we can utilize it as a lift, as seen here by the blue boat. But thinking back to our previous video about wind strength, that land can also be creating a wind shadow giving us more reason to avoid the left-hand side. So now, having added some understanding of simple wind shifts and bends to our strategy toolbox, it's important that we recap how to use this information in our decision-making process on the water, as discussed in a little bit more detail in my previous video on strategy and wind strength. First, we must identify these gain features, whether they're changes in wind strength or direction. This can be done pre-start or even pre-event. 
Then we must prioritize this information into two or three key features and create a plan around those. Next, we actually execute that plan, trying not to forget your plan within the pressure of the other boats. And finally, we evaluate it, feeding that information back into the system for next time, learning and adapting. In our next video, we're going to have a similar look at how tide may affect our strategical decision making around the course.